on our <laughs> lesson. This, uh, this, this week we were supposed to read chapters 7, 8, and 9 in uh, our book. Uh, chapter 7 was when you believe in God but don't think you can change. Chapter 8 was when you believe in God but still worry all the time. And chapter 9, when you believe in God for pursue happiness at any cost. Uh, and it, 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 these were interesting chapters to me because I can see myself in, <laughs> in, in, in a lot of this stuff. And so, so good interesting to me. That in, uh, uh, in, in the chapter 7, when you believe God in God but don't think in change, when he says, is, is many Christian atheists live year after year under the illusion that we simply can't change. Uh, uh, e even e in what he says in the book, once we've forgiven ourselves for past mistakes, some surrender to present problems, uh, never even help, never even hoping to overcome them. Uh, and and we, we say we, we openly, even proudly believe in God, but we don't honestly believe he can change us. Christian, Christian atheists who tried to change and failed wrongly believe that God simply can't change them. Uh, and that is a problem I have. There, there are some things I have in my life that I wish would change. <laughs> and I have worked on trying to change them and prayed about changing them, but they haven't changed. They changed, but they haven't gone away completely. Uh, and so sometimes, like sometimes, I think, what will I ever change at all? And I pray. That's where I pray sometimes. God, I, I can't change. Uh, why? 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 You know, I, I'm asking you to change me or help me to change, but I never change. And so I guess part of that problem is my problem, <laughs> because because. If we left it up to God, God can change us. Uh, uh, so it's perhaps a lack of, it's a, it, well, honestly, it's a lack of belief, I guess, or not allowing God to do the things uh, in, our, in our lives, or doing the things in our lives that God wants us to do and directing us to do to cause us to change. Uh, uh, there's a and, and we've looked at this scripture before. There's a scripture in Second Corinthians, uh, ten, ten, chapter ten, three and four. And there was, there was a scripture we had in our last study on the on a prayer warrior, uh, chapter Second Corinthians ten, three and four. Because what happens? Because what happens when we when we allow stuff in our lives that, that's detrimental to us, or that or that we know is outside God's will for us, and sometimes there's stuff we know for sure is outside God's will for, and, and it doesn't change. What's happened is is what's happened is a, it's become a stronghold. It's become a stronghold, something that really needs needs to be battered and beaten down. Uh, uh, ten, you have it, give Second Corinthians 10, uh, 10, 3 and four. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, to pulling down strongholds. Right. So what we have is a stronghold, and what the scripture says, and we all agree to all of this, <laughs> is, is that the weapons, the our, our weapons are powerful through God, the divine power, and they can demolish strongholds. Uh, we quote that and, 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 and say that, but do we really believe it? And I guess that's where the problem, that's where the Christian atheist, that, that oxymoron thing comes in. Is that we believe that. We do. I mean, we don't disbelieve it. The, the problem is, is that we maybe don't believe it's for us. Maybe that's the problem. Because we actually have seen... We've actually seen people change. I've seen people change. Right? I've seen people that had a lot of issues change. I've seen, I've seen, even, even here in this ministry with, with you, Houston, and Eugene, I've seen people that have had a real addiction problems change. I've seen it. I've seen a woman, my dearest friend, mm -hmm. was a pure toilet. 
Right? Okay. She's, she's going to church. Right. So I've, I've seen, so so why is it, I can't, I can't sometimes. Okay, I, I, in college, they taught us, this was, I was in junior college. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, they taught us that no matter what you do, no matter how you pursue, biblically, theologically, however, whatever, like that, <laughs> the, the, the professor described in actual events that didn't work <coughs> compared to <coughs> actual events that worked and changed. Uh -huh. And the conclusion is this, the only way that you can change because your mindset wants to is if something drastically happens to you. If a life-threatening situation happens to you. If you're confronted with a danger. If it's a danger to your life. He said, why? Because your physical makeup, your brain is, is there to make you right. So if it's in your brain what you're doing, like that you're right in doing it. And the only thing, the only thing that's going to change your physical movements is something horrendous. That, something uh, life-threatening. But, uh, uh, yeah, horrible. That, yeah, and 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 that's maybe and that's 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 uh, and, 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 and and yeah, and I'm not I'm 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 not I'm, I'm actually gonna gonna agree with that well, from this from this point with from this point. Here's why I'm gonna agree because uh, and we've talked about this kind of before. God disciplines in us disciplines in us right by allowing certain things to happen and a a something like that you are a, a a horrible tragedy that God allows. That happen because it's, it's, it will happen. If, you know, if if God if God allows it, it's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that will cause, and that can cause some change. Here's a, here, here's a piece of that that I kind of that I disagree with. Okay, because I'm agreeing with this that that a a a a a, a trauma a tragedy will cause somebody to change. I agree with that. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. Now. How, and a lot of it is because we don't change, <laughs> right? A, 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 a lot, a, a lot of bad things happen to us because we don't change. Now, from 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 from, from the spiritual point of view, okay, God allows. We've talked about this before. We talk about why things happen. Sometimes God allows them uh, to happen to us. And I'm talking about believers now, to us, but. Uh, to, to, to cause us to think to discipline us. It's a, a form of discipline. Not punishment, yeah, correction. but well, correct, correction. Uh, and that'll cause, that'll cause, uh, cause, cause, uh, that'll cause change. Uh, but from a Christian atheist point of view, we don't want to get to that point. Okay? We don't want to get to the point where it takes a tragedy to cause us to change. Because it could be a tragedy that kills us. Right? So we don't want to get there. Okay? <laughs> All right? And so, so what we want to be able to do is, you, is, is, is to allow the Holy Spirit to work some things in our life to cause us to change. Nothing's impossible for God. All right. Isn't that what happens then? Whatever you are, path you're on, and it's not the right path, the Holy Spirit is what works it out inside of you out. Well, what what what, I mean, the, what the Holy Spirit does is because because God won't make you do anything against your will. Now, what the what the Holy Spirit does though is is we, we, the Holy Spirit works for what we say our conscious causes. If you know if you're doing something that's that's detrimental to you to you to you until your consciousness just goes completely wacko, you know that and you want. To change, that's the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's the Holy Spirit. And then, and 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 then, and then, and then, if you allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, then He'll work that, work you're, that change. He'll work, right. He'll work that change out. But the first thing we have to do, the first, the very first thing we have to do, is to admit that we have a problem. We, we won't change unless we, unless we admit 
that we have a problem. And, and to believe that all those good gifts are from God that you're speaking of. Right. And you have to believe it, accept it, and work with it, not against it. Right, because because we have to re rem 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 remember, remember this. Remember, 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 remember this. Remember, 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 we we are we struggle with something. Like Paul is in a sense, is is it? It's in Romans, where Paul talks about the struggle he has with sin, and when he says it's not him, it's sin. It's not him. It's, it's not sin. And, right. Right. But but the conclusion he comes to, which is a conclusion we really need to come to, the conclusion he comes to is thank God for Jesus because he knows what the dangers of that of that sin of that sin is. So 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 we had we we got to we got to admit that we are that we have a problem. Well, but we also and we also know that we're under. Uh, you know that 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 sin, sin as believers since we've been saved that sin it doesn't master us anymore. Sin doesn't master us anymore because because we're under grace. Go, go to go to Romans chapter six, and I think this scripture may be in chapter six that we're talking about. It may not be there, but R Romans chapter six verse fourteen. Uh, Is uh, get ahead, read that. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Right. So, so, so while while we may struggling with while we're struggling with issues in our life that are sin, we have to we have to we have to remember that uh, that 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 find that scripture okay, for me. <laughs> the one where Paul talks about talks about. The struggle he has with uh, sin, and his conclusion is oh, the thorn in the flesh. no, 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 not there. Uh, this is in, and this is in Romans. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, right, right, right. The thing I wanted to do, I can't do that. That, that one. Um, that's what I want to find. Uh, Because it's there, we got to realize realize that that sin does not, you know, while we struggle with not not being a change, we, we it, since we're under grace, it doesn't, it's not our master anymore. While we're looking for that, yeah, when you find it, let me know, or or, or okay. Eugene, um, is the the first thing, the first thing we got to do, we got to remember, is to admit that we have a problem, and that's sometimes the most difficult thing to do. First time to, to admit to ourselves that. We, that we got a problem. We to acknowledge that we got a problem, um, and and because if you don't recognize it, you can't work on it. Right, and and the th and the thing and the, the thing that the thing that 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 I would do all the time uh, is is to say, I can stop this. It's not a problem. This <laughs> this is not a problem. I can stop this. But when then when it when you can't stop it. Then you got to acknowledge the fact that you got a problem. That's and that's the first. That's the first step uh, to admit we got a problem. Uh, and then what we have to do is invite God to change us, because He's the one that can make the change. Uh, and and though, though it seems impossible to us, remember the scripture said uh, nothing is impossible for God. Houston, go to find Mark, Mark chapter ten. Uh, -huh. uh started started verse twenty four. This was this this was after the guy this was after the rich guy uh asked what uh, what he needed to, needed to do and uh uh Jesus ended up saying, you know, you you've kept all the commandments, now go sell your stuff and give to the poor and he left. Uh so so start reading that verse twenty four. And, and the disciples were so, well, so actually start the verse start the chapter the verse before that. Okay, and Jesus looked around about and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that 
have riches enter into the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Okay, so, so, so generally that, 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 that's a comment about salvation. Uh, with, with men it's impossible to... to, 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 to 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 obey the law. It's impossible to please God. And with men, it's impossible. But, but it's possible with God. All things are possible. With God, nothing's impossible. So that so that goes for change. Where we think we can't. We can't. We can't change. But God is the one that can affect change. Even what with something that we think is impossible to do, God can change. Now, what we have to remember, though is that change may not always be immediate. We have to trust God that he can do what he says he can do. Now we want, uh, why God won't do it immediately? I don't know. Uh, uh, some of it is, some of it may be because we subconsciously are resisting the change. And God, remember, God won't do anything. If you don't, if you don't want to do anything, God's not going to do it. He's not going to make you do it. You'll just have to suffer the consequences. We're not going to make you do it. Yeah, I hear you say under your breath, strongholds have to be beat down. Yeah, strong, strongholds, you got to pull them down. You got to pull them down. And the only thing that can pull down the stronghold is the truth. And the truth is in the word of God. Uh, so, a, 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 you know, and anything that's built up in your life that's a, that's a habit or something you do that you would like, that, that you know, that's either detrimental to you, your health, uh, or, your, or, your, or, your, or your emotional well-being, or that you know is against uh, the word or the will of God. And if you can, and, and 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 you don't, if you don't do anything about it, and you you can't change, it's a struggle to change. That's a stronghold, and that's been built up. And the only thing that can tear it down, according to Scripture, it says, "Our weapons are, 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 are not come, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds." That's going to be the word of God that helps us. It's the truth that will pull those down. The truth that God can, you know, God, God, nothing's impossible for God. The truth that we are the righteousness. Of God, because one of one of one of the things that keeps us maybe from changing is that what it is we're doing, or have done, or that can't change is not pretty, a pretty picture, <laughs> right? Uh, and so, um, uh, uh, and so we feel unworthy. Well, if we're the righteousness of God through Christ, then that that's the truth, and that'll begin to break those strongholds down. But they won't, they won't, some of them won't change overnight, and God won't change them overnight. God can help us to change. That's a better word to use. God can help us to change if we admit it, first of all, and allow, and allow him to, uh, to work. Um, because with us, it may be impossible. Now, some things we can change. But but, the, but there's some things that are probably impossible for us to change. But all things are possible with God, and so we have to admit that we got a, we got a, we got a, a problem. I went through in the book. There's a section there in in the chapter seven. It said, "Ask yourself." There's six questions, and I want to go over those. But I I, I went over them and I answered them. <laughs> and, and, <coughs> And because what is I, I you, you you know what page it's on here? Yeah? Mm, it's it's in chapter seven though. Yeah. And a little section is ask yourself. If you can find it, whoever finds it on first. Page one thirty. Page one thirty four. One thirty three. One thirty three. Here 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 are the questions. 
And what he says is, if if a person answers yes to three or more, chances are they have a problem. And, and so here's the question. Do your family and friends say you have a problem, even though you might deny it, others can often see more objective than you? I have to answer yes. <laughs> do, do, do you continue even though you are hurting people? If you look at, at what some people claim has control over you, do they? You, do you keep practicing it or giving it in to them, even when it affects others negatively? Do you? You don't want to hurt people, but if they continue to suffer because of your actions, chances are good that you have a problem. I had to honestly, if I'm real, real honest, I had to answer that question. Yes, that's some stuff. That, okay, that's two out of six for me. All <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Three, do you arrange your schedule, priorities, or spending around it? If you make major life changes to get your fix, odds are your fix has a stronghold on you. Okay, that's enough. Do you arrange, uh, change your schedule, priorities, or spending around it? Uh, I'd answer yes to that. That's three out of six, right, for me, right? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Can you go one week without it? The answer to that was no. So that's four. <laughs> okay. I couldn't go and work it out. Work. He's talking about his work thing, right? Is it driving others away? Uh, once an addiction reaches an advanced stage, it tends to isolate the one who's addicted. When your actions continue to hurt abuse and neck others, they tend to pull back. That's the one uh, that I, I, I was, uh, as of yet, <laughs> that didn't happen. So, so, so having answered that, I have a problem. Right, I have a problem, uh, and uh, I need to admit it and ask God to help. And the, the last one: Are you denying the problem or trying to keep it as a secret? And the answer to that was yes. yes. <laughs> right. right. So that's think, for, for me. That's six out of six, or five out of six. I think anything that you become obsessed with that is not God. Because he said God's right about God's right. Right. Even if it's a part of God's quote unquote ministry. Yeah, it's a problem. Absolutely. It's a problem. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Correct. That's a problem. Right. And cause his example he gives an example in his book about his his ministry and the fact he was in seminary and when his when his first child was born. What he was doing was good stuff for the Lord. <laughs> you know, that's what we do. I'm working for the Lord, good stuff for the Lord. But what happens is his problem was work. That was a problem. Uh, I used that's a problem I don't have anymore. But I used to have that problem. With my, that, that matter of fact, that's the thing that that killed my first marriage was work. I would work, 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 and so we get to the next thing. Uh, as it says in the book, is 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 is, is forget the excuses. Well, I had one for the work thing. My excuse was was I'm working to make money for this family. I got to take care of my kids and my wife, so I had to work. Well, that's an excuse, right? Because what it was doing, it was destroying my family. Pastors have a high rate of divorce. Uh, and the reason is, not infidelity, some of it is, but for the most part, it's they work, and but they're working in the ministry. Right, the congregation. Right, working in the congregation. Yeah. Forget about the family, the wife at home, the children at home, the congregation, the congregation, the congregation, the congregation, the congregation the and what he's, he's thinking is, uh, 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 I'm, I'm the pastor. Uh, I got this ministry to do. But what happens is the ministry becomes more important than the family, which is your initial ministry. That's the main. That's your main ministry, no matter who you are. Your main ministry is to your family, and then you branch out from that. So, so uh, uh, one way, one way that one way that we can allow God to work in in in, in changing us is to stop making excuses for not changing, not being able to change. Uh, you know, um, when you're working in the ministry and, and you're working uh, to help people and heal people, 
It is if you don't forget about your family, right? <laughs> right. So, 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 yeah. So, let me 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 give you an example. Your you have a young family. Uh, you got young kids. Uh, it, that, that's an example in the book. Uh, uh, where uh, you got where, where he's working in the ministry all the time. You're working, you're helping people. You're out there. You're working in the church. You're helping. Do, you're doing God's work. Okay. Uh, but but what what he did? What the example in the book is when he 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 picked his little girl up to kiss her the good night and kiss her good night mm-hmm. and said, I'll, I, "I'll I hope to see you." Uh, can kiss you again before you go to sleep. And she said, she's a five-year-old kid, but think about it. She said, but daddy, you don't live here. You live at the <laughs> church. <laughs> so so that, 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 that's, we, can, that, we can do that. We can do that in ministry. Because our, our first ministry, so what happens is we need to get our priorities straight. We don't need to stop that. We need to get our priorities in order and if we need to get somebody else to help us right. with that part of the ministry, we have to do that. Right. That's, we, that's like being a steward of your situation. Yes. Of, of your time. So right. That's where the stewardship part Right, 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 right. So that, that's an excuse we need to get rid of. We need to get rid of that excuse. Uh, and uh, um, uh, so then, 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 then we can be effective... Because if we if we are, if we are, if we are effective with our, home, our our families, then we're going to be more effective with others. Because so they're going to see our families. Our families then become a part of our ministry, and they and they minister. So that's a point. Point that that's like that like the uh, uh, an example he uses of excuses is the one with uh, in the, where Jesus uh, sees the guy by the uh, pool of Bethesda and asks the guy if he want to be healed, and the guy says, "Of course." And, and no, well, no. The guy says yes, but every time, but I can't get to the pool, right? <laughs> right? So he's giving an excuse. Yes, I want this, but I got an excuse. So yes, I want to change, but I got an excuse. My excuse is I need to work for my family. My excuse is I need to do this. I'm stressed out. And I need to do whatever it is you do, <laughs> right? Right? Because uh, I'm stressed. That's an excuse. Uh, and if, if if I can just settle, calm down. If I can do this, just calm down. I'm okay. I'll be better. And I can I can work on changing that. That's an excuse. We we need to get rid of the excuses and let God, as in the case with the guy by the pool, let Jesus, let God's power affect the change. Right. In other words, we're really denying his power to Absolutely. Right. We right, we're denying his power to uh, to to, to uh, denying, denying his power to help us change. Denying we are saying you I can't change and you can't change me either. So <laughs> so, so and that's what <laughs> right, 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 right. But but that's essentially what we're saying. We're saying, you know, I I, I can't change but but again, we're Christians, and we've seen him change other people, and we know he changed other people. But we somehow can't change. So we somehow we have somehow are denying God the opportunity to change us, and we have to get we have to get over that. We have to change the way we think, uh, and. Um, 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 we got to go back and remember the weapons. The weapons, weapons of our warfare, are, 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 are not carnal; they're mighty through God to the pulling down of, of strongholds. So, so we can, we can, through the Word of God, we can, we can demolish that stronghold with the Word of God. We just got to continue speaking the Word of God to whatever that stronghold is. Uh, and we need to change our thinking because we we always and we say this every Sunday. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens, who strengthens me, right? So that would mean, right, that if we want something to change, 
if we believe that, then that could happen, right? Now, uh, and so, and, but we got to keep reminding ourselves. We have to constantly remind, because what we have now is a stronghold, right? And so we got to constantly remind ourselves with the truth till that stronghold is pulled down. And we got to allow God to do it. Because we cannot change ourselves. We try, and I've tried, and I'm still trying. And I got, I got, so I got, I got to remember, I cannot change myself because my strength is limited. Uh, um, um, I can, I can, I can try to use all the willpower that I've got my on myself, but my willpower is not limitless. I'll, I'll eventually wear out, but God won't. Uh, uh, and and God, God want God is good. So God only wants the best for us. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. You said that earlier today. But so God wants the best. For us. The scripture says that His His uh, His plans for us are good and not evil. So God wants the best for us. So then, if He wants the best for us, if we allow Him, He'll cause uh, and, and surrender His to His power. He'll. Help us change, or he'll, he'll he'll cause us to do the kinds of things that that we uh, uh, we need to do to change. Um, but we have to we have to realize we cannot do it. We cannot do it ourselves. Um, the 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 uh, now that, that now that's 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 what we talked about in chapter seven. Uh, which it's changing, and, and the, again, the bottom line is we got to admit to one, admit we have, a, admit we have a problem, uh, and allow and admit the fact that we can't change, and allow God to affect change in our lives through His power and the power of the Holy Spirit. But also remember, it may not happen overnight, because again, these are strongholds. They've been built up over time, and it may take some time to, for them to be torn down. Now God can do it, but we also we've got we also got uh, uh, on the other hand we've got our enemy, which is which which is how the stronghold built that built, and it's all in our mind. So we've got we've got to constantly b- battle that with the Word of God. Uh, here's a okay, not to, to take too much time, but here's a deep, deep stronghold. Okay. That that that's just to me is life. I mean, my daughter. Uh huh. Okay. She is in a position. She has a job. She has all these good attributes, and everything is in her favor. Mm-hmm. And that's from God. I know right. it is. Right. And she has always. Taken in a bum, a bum, yeah, okay, a lot of bum. Yeah. Somebody that that's got to be looking like Michael Jackson. He doesn't have to have a job. Yes, yeah. It doesn't lot matter of what. <laughs> yeah. And she's got two kids. Right. Yeah. She doesn't matter how she gets yeah. what she has to get to take care of her family. Right. She must <coughs> must have a man okay. like this. Okay. Yep. Nothing will change it, yep. Pastor Jacob. Well, she can't. Right. She she no, can't change no, it. Nothing will right. change. Nothing change that. that. Nothing will change that. But God, she has to allow. She has to allow that to happen. To change the kind of man she wants. Yeah. She. She. Has, well, well, first of all, I would bet you. I don't know this for sure. I would bet you that she doesn't see that as a problem. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so remember what we said. The first thing you had to do is you had to admit, <laughs> admit. But I tell her over and over, right. and over again. But I you said, can you tell her. Just got yep. rid of that one. Yep. Now you got another one. You can tell her that. Right. And then she'll make those silly excuses. But right. And there we go. See, we're going through this whole thing now. So, so, we, so, so, first, she has to first admit there's a problem, and it's only she can do that. We can, we can talk to people. That we're blue in the face because the thing we have to remember, we're talking about change, <laughs> the thing we have to remember is God can change people, we can't change them. 
we can we can we can talk to them and we can give them the word of God and God may be be, be, be telling us to, God may even be giving us the words to say to the person but until they admit that they have a problem there's absolutely no way to change but, and, and 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 what you, you said what you do stuff that uh, stuff that I do the stuff you said what she does is she gets these excuses okay and what happens is now what we hope doesn't happen is what you said early on in the class and that was that what happens sometimes to affect change is a Serious, serious life threatening something, right? Now, what we hope, we hope that that doesn't change. What we hope, what we hope, what we, what we hope is that, but but is that uh, the word that you're speaking into her life will somehow click, right? Uh, and, and with something, because don't don't forget, don't forget the sowing and reaping thing. If you're sowing into, don't sowing into them. Uh, it eventually will reap. Don't also remember uh, the, 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 the verse in Proverbs about teaching. And when you teach a son, it doesn't mean just son. Okay? You teach a child, train up a child. Where to go that they will, will not depart from it. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't get into a whole lot of trouble. But what it'll mean is that what you've planted in her. One of these days is going to probably click. Now, right? I saw a lot of. Yeah, right. Right. A friend of mine, he was, uh, his, his older brother and I used to date, and uh, his middle brother was very successful. Larry wore nothing to do with nothing. You know, he got into drugs and everything else you can think of, and. His mother preached, I preached, and both of his brothers preached his mother. <coughs> and one day, I was, I never looked at it, I was sitting on the car to the rest of it. This man drives up beside me and said, get in there, and I didn't recognize him. He's a minister, he's, he's, uh, 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 and his main ministry is to preach and try to get people that, he said, I'm trying to tell everybody else and children, mom and dad, try to tell me. Mm -hmm. But this, 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 this was 20 years. Right. right. You know, this was 20 right. years later. Yep. And, you know, we thought he was a lost soul. You know? Yep. Well, and and was and God and God made the change. You mm -hmm. never you never know, and you ne you never know what you say to someone. How someday that may cause they'll remember. They they may be in the, the situation kind of situation you're talking about a dangerous situation, and they may remember what somebody said someday. That and especially if it's truth, if it's the word of God, if it's truth, uh, and uh, so. Um, uh, like we plant the seeds somebody else. Yeah, and God brings it right. God brings God is what who brings the increase again. God is the one that can change. We can't change ourselves. We can't change other people, but God can do it. And as Christian atheists, what we got to remember is that is that change can happen because God can do it. So. So, so we we need to change that thing from from believing in God, but don't believe I can change to believing in God and knowing that He can change us once we admit it and want to change. That's the other part of it. We 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 have to deep down want to change uh, uh, because some of the stuff we do is pleasurable, physically, sensually. Uh, and but that don't make it good, <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right, right. So uh, it, it it could be be harmful. So we've got to we we've got to we've got to allow God to change. change. And and we know it's not good. Otherwise, we wouldn't want to change. You know why why change if it's not if it's something we do? But the Holy Spirit's not going to allow us to continue to do things. That I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, the scripture says your conscience will get seared, uh, uh, and I believe that. But it takes a whole lot right. to seal a conscience. The Holy Spirit was not yeah. going to let you go. Go into a state of 
great rebellion. Right, 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 say, right. You'd, right. Have, right. you'd have, right, you'd have, yep, you know. you'd have to go in the right, and right. and and not and not too many of us want to do that. <laughs> right, not too many of us want to do that. Right, so. right. That's good. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. And the other the other thing we do. Uh, sometimes when we don't change, and, and this is something else we need to change, and that's what the next chapter, chapter 8, uh, was uh, believe in God, uh, what was it? Uh, believe, you believe in, when you believe in God, but still worry all of the time. Uh, now, here's one, guys, where it really is not a problem for me. <laughs> right. yeah. I, I, and and, and and it's not and it's not that 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 uh, it wasn't at one time. And it's not that I don't know people that worry. Uh, uh, Ruth used to worry a lot, and I know other people who worry a lot, so I I can understand it. But thank God, I don't worry. In terms of the point where where it debilitates me, uh, um, um, it and and according to, according to this guy, it's right. If it's right, well, uh, if we worry, he says it's a sin. Uh, because because worry, <laughs> he said when we when we worry, we're doubting God. R R Romans fourteen twenty three uh, says, but whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat. So this is what he's talking about the food, right? He was talking about the food thing. Uh, uh, who, but whoever doubts is condemned if they eat because their eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is a sin. So if we're worrying about something, it's so we don't have faith in God to handle the situation. Uh, so he says it's a sin. Uh, and in, in, in Philippians 4, 6, which we say all the time, don't be anxious about anything and all things about prayer and supplication. Make your request known to God. And you will get the peace of God that passes all understanding. Well, so if, if we believe that, again, if it's Christian atheists, if we believe that, then uh, uh, we won't worry, um, because if we if if we're operating in faith, then we believe that God has everything under control, no matter what's going on, right? Uh, but if we start to worry, how we live is the opposite of us saying. That God has everything under control. You know, I've had this throat problem. Yeah. You know, from a year. Long time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the VA? All the doctors say we don't know. You know what it is, right? And it's still there. So right. I mean, somehow miraculously, I haven't been worrying about it. Well, that's good. So, so you know what? Right. I did. I know you did. I know you did. But then, but at some point, but uh, perhaps. It's still there, though. Yeah. But but and but it's still there. But at some point, perhaps, and I don't know. Cause you only you only know this. <laughs> the, it, you, 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 you have the faith. You have faith in God that He's got it under control. Whatever, oh, what, yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever it is. If we, if we were, if we were, and here's some stuff that that uh, uh, would would make you think. If we are worried about losing our jobs, that's what He said. We're essentially saying that our, jo our jobs are, are our providers. When uh, Scripture says that God is our provider, right? So if we say God is our provider, then we shouldn't worry about losing our job. Now, all of this stuff sounds easy to do, <laughs> right? Uh, um, uh, he says here, worry, in essence, is the sin of distrusting the promises and the power of God. It's choosing to dwell on and think about the worst case scenario. It's faith in the bad things rather than faith in God. Uh, and um, uh, that, that's a scripture in 2 Timothy. Um, again, and, 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 and this is what gets us out of these situations, is the truth, the word of God. 2 Timothy uh, 1, 7. All of these scriptures are scriptures we know too. I mean, these are not new. <laughs> right, right, right. Second Timothy 1 7. Got to get rid of gift. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love 
Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So, so, so. Uh, uh, I love the acronym for fear. Have you ever? Yeah, well, I, I, give me, give me. False expectations appearing, appearing real. real. Right, that's what fear is. We, we, it, 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 it appears real, but it's false. Because first of all, we, uh, we don't really know what we don't really know what. He, here, here's what he said. In his, you, you could easily translate fear to anxiety, mm -hmm. tension, or worry. And so if we do that, it doesn't, if fear doesn't come from God, where does it come from? If fear, if fear doesn't come from God, where does it come from? It, right, it comes from, from the devil, from my enemy to try to distract us. Uh, and you know, Jesus told us we're not to worry about anything anyway. Uh, in, in, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, verse 25. Now, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Now, what, 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 what and he writes this in it. The Greek word Jesus uses for life is suke, S-U-E-K, wise word spell. It doesn't mean just breathing life. Uh, the force that makes your life go, it actually means every aspect of your life taken in total. Your mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual life. It means your yesterday, today, and future life. Jesus is simply saying don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Uh, now, uh, does that mean don't be concerned? You, you hesitate to kind of play with words, but that, but but we also need to be wise. Right. There's a difference, I think, in wisdom and worry. If wor worry is either like you said, anxiety and fear. How does worry keeps you safe? Huh? Worry keeps you safe. Like you, yeah. if you, you know, if, if you, you know, if you have lived right, right, right. Walk, that's a good walk, point. Right, walk correct. Into the middle that's a good point. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's because something. you're not, you know, they're not gonna hit me. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's also too, like observation. You know, you gotta mm -hmm. be, where, you know, observing everything in your surroundings. You know, that's practicing discernment. Right. They're right. Because they, right, it, it would be foolish. Right. It would be foolish to say, ah, I'm not worried, and just right. boom, out the, out the, That's. Yeah, that's that's foolishness. So we don't want to be foolish. We want to be wise, and that's a good point. Uh, it, it, it keeps us safe. You want to you want to you want to be aware so that you're safe. Um, but you don't want necessarily need to be anxious or of, what's the word I want to use? Obsessed. Right, right. So be anxious for nothing. You can be over like I know I have a friend. She she worries about everything. Right, uh, right. My mother was like, that. right, right. She look at the sky and see a. I know, and and, and right, what's going right? Yep, yep, yep. And, yep, right, and, right. And, and 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 that 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 kind of worry is really debilitating because it causes you not to want to do anything, and that's not what God what God wants. God wants us to be happy to enjoy life, and like Jesus said, don't worry about, uh, don't worry about anything, because uh, 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 He said. You know it, what it says uh, that 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 God provide all of our needs. We have, so we have to believe that that God will provide all of our needs. Uh, we worry uh, uh, because that's 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 the enemy causes us to worry. What if that's the problem? What if what if I lose my job? What if this happens? What? If that happened, that's what we're looking at, and that's what causes us to worry. Well, we shouldn't be concerned with that, uh, about with with the what ifs. If it happens, it happens. Okay, and there's probably nothing we could have done about it anyway. So why be concerned about it now? If we talk about wisdom. If you can, if you see stuff, for example, you're working, and if you see that 
sales are going down a lot. And if you see customers are not coming in, and if you see your boss wringing his hands, then it's probably time for you to start looking for a job, right? <laughs> right? Looking for another job. So, but don't freak out and worry because if you worry, what well, that'll cause you then not to look, or right, you can't right, or to or to take something that is not God's will for you because you're afraid. So. Uh, 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 we need to be free from worry, uh, and, and 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 but 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 being free from worry doesn't mean not doing anything. It doesn't mean well, I'm not worried about anything. It doesn't mean like with like the, 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 the example about the job. It doesn't mean okay, well, I'm not worried, so I'm not you know I'm just I just I just watch all of this, but I'm not worried. Well, uh, you probably will. Get fired <laughs> or laid or laid off, uh, but 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 God has given you some wisdom to be able to see see things. So we, we have to we have to take some responsibility, which is what we don't do sometimes. We get super spiritual, or uh, what is he he calls we can overdo faith. By saying, God's going to take care of me no matter what and don't do nothing. I do know people who have to say that and do that. And they don't help. They don't advance. They don't move. They don't do anything. Uh, but then complain because I was waiting on God to do this, right. and He didn't do it. Right, and right in the flood, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. You drown because hey, I'm just sitting here. God's going to take care of it. Well, He's, you know, uh, I guess the assumption is is, is you're going to be raptured. I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess there's a assumption, the assumption, but 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 not but to, to disregard. The things God has given us wisdom. Wisdom. God gives us wisdom. Uh, um, um, but so, but 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 so we so we don't want to overdo faith. We really don't want to overdo because we can. We got to do something. And the thing to do is is we do what we can do, and that's all we can do. And then when we run out of the stuff we can do. Right then, then we then what we do then is to pray and ask God to uh, and ask God to to, uh, uh, to to take care of the situation. After we, but only after we've done what we can do, we got to do what we can do. Uh, and because the danger is in 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 is when when we when we go out of the stuff that we do, then that is when we start worrying. But we don't want to get to that point. So what uh, his point is a good one. I think it's a great one. Is when we reach that point, and we will sometimes. When we reach that point, then the next thing for us to do is to uh, pray. Start praying that. Here, let me see. Let me find this right here. It says, uh, "If you do catch yourself worrying, either if you've done what was wise." Remember that God is bigger than our problems and that he wants us to hand them over to him. Worry then becomes a signal alerting us that it's time to pray. Um, then we, and we got to, and so then, but, and then we have to trust God. So we, 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 we've done, we've done all we can do. We've 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 used the wisdom God has given us. We've done all we can do, and then uh, we say, God, okay, I've done all that I can. I really have. I've done all that I can do, and it doesn't look like this is going to turn out. And I'm asking you to to show me something else or do something else. Then what we have to do is just is to trust 
God, right? Which is hard to do sometimes. Unless we do what we've been talking about in the, in this study, in the, in the last study, is is change the change the perspective from ours to God's. Remembering, we're only looking at a finite period of time. We're looking at we're looking at okay, uh, uh, I lost my job, and uh, on the first. And I'll tell you, all, all my savings are gone. On the first, the rent is due. That's we know. That's, that's so we're looking at that. God's looking beyond that. So we we when, when we pray, we've got to we've got to trust God that He's going to do what He said He would do, which is to meet all of our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It, we've got to trust him to 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 do to 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 do what he says. When Jesus said, "Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about what you eat, or drink. You 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 you're more precious than uh, than sparrows and all that kind of stuff." We got to remember that. Trust that, because in the trust that God is good, and that no matter what happens, He's good. If He provides. For us to pay the rent, he's good. If he doesn't, we still got to trust him that he's good and not succumb to worry. Now we're going to be con- you know, it's 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 it. The, all of this stuff is easy to say, right. and, and 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 but but we got to get we got to get. And when it happens, we. We have to pray, and and I've been in some situations where that it, stuff like that has happened, and uh, all that was left <laughs> to do was to pray, and 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 uh, uh, and pray even past the expiration date. I mean, <laughs> boom, it's expired, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and keep praying, and God. So, and and I guess that's how today I don't have a big problem. With worry, I really don't. I have a problem with a lot of other stuff. I got a problem with the change thing. <laughs> I, I I got a problem with some 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 other things. But thank God, I don't have a problem with the worry and because and because I, I guess I've learned that I got to do what I got to do. I can't. I can't. God has said. He's God has said. Here's here's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Uh, he's given me wisdom. He he said he's gonna provide. He's given me wisdom. Uh, uh, to do what I'm supposed to do, uh, because uh, I, I think that that if we do, if we, we're not exercising our faith, if we don't take responsibility for doing things, uh, we're taking God for granted, right? Uh, and so, uh, but but uh, um, uh, having gone through some situations. And God has come through. Now I, I I can now say I can't say that I will never worry <laughs> again. But what I can say is I'm a lot. I worry a lot less than I did before because God has always come through. Not the way all the time that I wanted it or when He wanted it. But it always comes through. Sometimes it's taking longer than I than I than I than I than I, than, I, than, I, than, I, than I than I had hoped, uh, and then longer than I prayed for. But it always comes through. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this study today. Thank you that we're t- thinking about talking about things that are real life for us. Uh, that and 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 uh, that your word gives us direction and guidance. We thank you, Father, for that. We ask that you bless the services today. Bless those that are on their way. 